we would start off today with what your inspiration was for pursuing a career in the media. Had you always wanted to be a reporter? Um, I had never always wanted to be a reporter. Mm -hmm. It was, for me, it was a bit of an accident actually. I was working part-time at a radio station. Strangely enough, a year after that, I was very lucky to apply for a job with the ABC television in Brisbane and they accepted me. I couldn't believe it. Because really, I had a background in economics. I've done no journalism whatsoever. Yeah. What, in your experienced opinion, makes for a good interview? Is it based solely on the skills of the reporter? If we're talking in terms of television, what makes a good interview is someone who has a compelling story to tell. If, if they don't have a compelling story, you could be the best interviewer in the world and you produce a result that was really not very watchable. Fair enough. Well, with that in mind, do you think there are any pitfalls or hazards that new reporters should be aware of? If there are pitfalls that a new reporter would fall into, it's, it's really just uh, trying to do too much without being um, exposed to the whole production process. Um, I don't think I felt comfortable for a couple of years doing interviews. I kept thinking to myself, why am I sitting here asking these questions? And then after a couple of years, the penny drops and you suddenly think, hey, I'm a journalist, I'm allowed to ask these questions. But I think it's a difficult process which is only eased with experience. Do you feel reporting is still a relevant area in this day and age with all that kind of digital media going around? What mm. do you think of that? It, I think reporting is very relevant today, even given the digital consolidation. One reporter can write a story in Sydney and it can be rewritten in a hundred different ways and go out around the world within a matter of minutes. That I find quite awesome. It still needs someone to say, hey, that's interesting, and these are the questions that people want answered. So do you think that that crossing over of reporter to celebrity has been detrimental to the profession as a whole? Well, it, it is. It's detrimental to the ethics of journalism, but it's probably not detrimental to sales. I've been in television 40 years now. This is my 40th year. And it has been driven by personalities and egos, often to the point where the story or the talent are submerged behind the reporter's ego. We've all seen those kind of stories and it's a, it's a pretty shoddy form of journalism whereas print journalists I think have a lot more cleaner, if you like, ethical uh, way of conducting their business because you don't get as much of the personality in. So I'd love to think that um, the actual journalist's presence was less important. I, think, I still think it's too important. Fair enough. Well, what do you think is more of a problem? Is it the celebrity status of the reporters or does the professional higher up, do they place any expectations or certain viewpoints on the reporters that might affect how we view the news? Uh, well, we are all bound um, generally by our own code of ethics. Different networks have different styles. Um, some media outlets make a, a virtue of not sensationalising, and by that I'd be talking about SBS probably, and to a lesser extent the ABC, and good luck to them. But generally they don't attract the audiences of yeah. the programs that do. People still demand a degree of sensational presentation. Uh, as unfortunate as that might be, they like to uh, they like to have their dinner with all the trimmings on the plate. Have you ever felt like your autonomy personally was ever threatened in a situation where you were ever forced to report on something in a certain way that you might not have agreed with? Or? Oh, frequently, but I'm bound by confidentiality not to discuss the specifics yeah. of yeah. that. Earthquakes in Melbourne and orange dawn in Sydney and this blanket of choking dust. No ferries, no planes, is it the end of the world? No, but it's pretty spooky. Have you seen your car lately? Um, yes I have. It needs to clean. Around Australia, the elements are threatening to disrupt our lives. What kind of ethics do you have to take into consideration when you're reporting on that kind of overseas incident? I believe at one point you reported on a terrorist incident in India. You have to be aware that even though you're a long way away, there are people with sensitivities in your own backyard who uh, could be offended or who could take it the wrong way if you allow the pen to stray too far from uh, the line of absolute uh, neutrality. Well, have you ever found yourself in a threatening situation where your communication skills might have helped defuse a potentially dangerous situation? I've been threatened many times. Um, I've had a gun pointed at me. 
Um, I've been shaking around a bit. Uh, usually they attack the cameraman if it's a TV crew. For some reason they think the camera is the oppressive object. No, I, I, I think when you meet a very angry person and they don't want to be exposed, really you just need to read their face very carefully and know when they're about to snap. Before we finish up, is there anything you'd like to pass on to us as was a communication students? Um, don't be disheartened if you're not lucky. Sooner or later, your luck will come to you. All right, there you have it. Thanks for coming in today, Mr. Gibbs. It was a pleasure having you. Oh, thank you, Alex.